Okay, welcome to another Kitchen Sink Microscopy. I'm Eric Rosenblatt, and we would love it if you'd like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. It really helps the channel out. And I'm Casey Rochefort, and uh, we also write music for each of these episodes, so uh, stick around for that. Or, you know, if you hate us, skip to the end at least, because the music's awesome. And uh, if you like it, go to patreon.com slash ksmvidcast, and you can own it. All right, All right, so uh, <laughs> what do you think we should do today? What, what fun do we have in store for the audience? Well, we have a little bit of a different thing planned today. Um, a bit of an experiment. We'll see how this goes. Um, <clears throat> I, as a scientist, I like experiments. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this, it, it could fail, as many science experiments do. But this is true. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. So it's a little thing I call the lightning round. Um, where we allot ourselves five minutes to talk about all of our, you know, major categories of topics that we have. And we randomly select in secret most of those topics and kind of throw them out back and forth. We alternate and throw them out to each other. And then we kind of hash out whatever, whatever the topic of discussion is. Yeah, so, you know, we kind of divvied it up 50-50, so uh, he, he selected half of them, I selected half of them, and then since we have about nine categories, we've got only one that each of us knows what it's going to be at the very end, and, uh, but everything else is just going to be completely off the wall, we, we don't know what, what's going to happen. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we know the, the topics, but we don't know or we know the categories, but we don't know the topics. So right. neither of us knows what the other is going to bring up. And yep. we, we might possibly bring up the same thing. So <laughs> hopefully we don't. Because um, some of these categories overlap. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, I think it's a good time to let the lightning round begin. What lightning round? Yeah! All right! <laughs> okay, so the first category um i'll i'll start uh the first category is politics so i'm going to start the timer at five minutes and the topic is executive orders oh geez i i i mean aren't those basically just king bullshit like oh i say this is something that needs to be and that's that's the way it's going to be and i mean what's what's what else? Yeah, could I, be? <laughs> I totally agree, and I, I think originally it was intended uh, more of uh, a presidential recommendation, like kind of saying, "Hey, you know, maybe we should do these things. We should go in this direction, just a plan or something like that." But now it's turned into, like you said, it's sort of like a, a directive from a king, with all powerful. And I mean, I, I guess to be fair, it's not all powerful because, like, I can't. I think the judicial branch can push back on it because there's been a lot of ones that Trump's tried to put through that Supreme court was kind of like, you can't do that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that that is the case, but there are uh, quite a, quite a few things that kind of seem to skirt around the system a little bit and give a little bit too much power to the executive branch. Yeah. Well, and, I think if it's an executive order, that's not a huge deal, people in the position of, you know, the checks and balances portion of the power are probably like, well, it's not worth the effort. But, you know, like when it's totally crazy, they're like, yeah, yeah, you can't do that. We're going to exert our force here. Well, but, um, there are some executive orders, though, that are pretty, pretty big. Um, I, I don't isn't remember. Isn't that the Patriot Act? Wasn't that executive order? No, no, that no. wasn't. That, that was actually like proper legislation. Uh, um, but there's that one executive order. What is it? One zero 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 one or so, I, I, maybe eleven. <laughs> is it binary? I <laughs> uh, no, I, I can't remember what what which number it is. But it basically gives. There's an old android saying. <laughs> <laughs> it gives the federal government the power to seize control in times of emergency of all means of production and all land and all materials like food and stuff like that. Somebody, somebody can bring it up. I maybe I'll put it up on the screen. I like a police remember. state or something. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, exactly. That was passed like a really long time ago, and it stuck around. It's kind of 
kind of scary. Oh, wow. Uh, but, but those kinds of things, because it does sort of, it, it, it circumvents the normal legislative process where things are debated and voted on. And, you know, there's, there's some, some analysis going on. It's kind of just like, it's a presidential decree to do anything. And I don't think it was originally intended for that, but it has become that. And if you look up the list of executive orders that are still active today, it is shocking. Wow. Shocking. I, I think. The executive I, I orders that. usually have like a, a finite time that they're effective or. Is I don't know. Of, yeah. I don't know so too much about like the, the longevity of an executive order. I, I think it's actually indefinite, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong on that one, that, that I could be completely wrong there, but there are some that are sticking around from like the sixties or something that, yeah, and I used active. to think there was a cap on how many you could do, but you know, like Trump's first sixty days in office was like executive order, executive order, executive order, executive order, executive order. <laughs> yeah, there's. I don't think there's a cap at all. <laughs> oh, there's, there's no cap on the absurdity either, which, which is <laughs> evident. Um, but yeah, <laughs> oh man, that is. I I I think it's it, it's. The, to me, I think it's supposed to be sort of more of a recommendation, and I and I I really think that. Um, that's sort of the direction we should be pushing more towards is that the president kind of recommends that things should be done this way. And maybe it's still technically that way, but it doesn't seem like it's, that's actually the way things work. Yeah. And it's a little scary because it is kind of like having a, a king at that point, because there, there isn't like a, 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 a to, to my knowledge, there isn't a specific format or limitation on what an executive order can say. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, we have a whole legislative branch that is like experts in making laws. And then you have this one dude uh, who may or, or may not or have a woman or woman. It could uh, be right. Yeah. Right. Uh, but historically so far up to yeah. now, um, mm -hmm. this one dude just basically saying, this is the law now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is, pretty scary you know and I'd, I'd actually be curious when if that whole entire process began with the constitution or if it was something that came I think later it did i think did it, it did okay. yeah well, i think it was supposed to be an emergency well that's time okay uh, well all right well all right so i guess we'll move right along to the on. next topic which uh i have chosen for the uh, category of public health and safety okay i'll start um, the timer Five right. minutes. So uh, here in the Seattle area recently, we've had a problem with a new kind of drug called carfentanil. You've probably heard of fentanyl, but this one's like a thousand times stronger. So hmm. do you think that something like that should even be a drug? Like that's yeah. hardcore hmm. stuff. <laughs> that's crazy. And I wonder what is the actual application of that? Why? I know, isn't, right? Isn't fentanyl like a, a, a tiny little just a, a speck is enough to kill you yeah, indeed so, yeah so now you have something that like you know a milligram of it would be probably like kill an elephant or something yeah, yeah I, I don't know i don't i haven't i mean it's it's relatively new in the area so i haven't really looked into too much about the, the chemistry and, and biochemistry but holy crap it's like people have been dying left and right here in seattle just in the last i think Three months or something. Jesus, um, is yeah. it is, so? Is carfentanil like a uh, something synthesized on the street, or is it like a an actual product that some drug company manufactured? That I don't know. I know fentanyl is legit. It's yeah. highly, highly controlled um, opioid. I think is. I think yeah. it's a form of op op opioid. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it it uh, it does have a medicinal purpose. Uh, and and it's been used very carefully in in the medical field, but carfentanil, I don't know if that was cooked up. Like I think they're, I think it's coming from China, huh. so I don't, I don't exactly know what's going on over there. Like if maybe they use it in their hospitals and somebody's smuggling it and then selling it to the U.S. because they don't have to smuggle very much at all. Like it can slip through the cracks because you only need like a little bit to, you know, get a million people high. Yeah, yeah, you, you could <laughs> or, do that. With, 
Yeah, you could do that with what you could smuggle in your pocket, basically. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think a lot of the fentanyl deaths, I, people are attributing it to drug companies and things like that and saying that there's... I, I think it's actually that fentanyl's coming in because of this, uh, you don't need as much material. It's coming yeah. in and being substituted in situations where somebody is selling heroin. So a heroin addict is administering it to themselves, thinking it's heroin, right. and totally killing themselves by ODing on it. And, and I think that's really the problem. And Yeah, I mean, people that, that do these illicit drugs off the streets, a lot, a lot of times they think they're doing one drug and end up doing another. Yeah, and that's, that's easily, easily a route to getting yourself killed, you know? Totally, yeah. And that's, Especially that's now cool. with this new, new stuff that's like, like mega drugs, you know? I mean, even, even marijuana can like compare it to the 1970s marijuana, which was like nothing. Now you can actually get kind of sick from it. And, you know, you, like, Oh yeah. Yeah. They've increased the THC levels to unprecedented heights. Um, and that, I think um, that, that the whole marijuana thing is a different, kind of a different angle on that. But I, I think that as far as the fentanyl deaths and stuff, because um, when you hear about the opioid crisis, they, they just kind of lump it all into one thing. And it's like, well, there's a lot of different angles going on here. And one of the things that might solve it is legalization. Um, because then you would know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. um, because that is a problem. Like you buy something on the street, who the hell knows what, what it is that, that you're buying? It could be anything. But yeah, if you buy it in a store, a legit place of business, they're not going to give you something bogus. They're going to give you what they're selling. You know, yeah, and it's got to be legalized because Seattle recently decriminalized drug use. So people are shooting up in the streets and stuff. It's not as rampant as a lot of people will have you think, but it creates problems because um, it's they're still – sourcing it from the streets and it's dangerous yeah yeah <laughs> so, you need to be able to buy it from a legit supplier like just like any other business yeah you know i mean it, it's basically like saying well it's it's totally legal to get high it's just illegal to actually possess the drug or something you know like or sell it <laughs> right or sell it you know because that's that's really the, the the problem there is the the point of sale that they can't just open a shop and sell opiates, um, yeah. you know, and, and that I think is a big, a big contributor to this, as they say, crisis. I, I think that's, well, well time's up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on to the next topic. All right. Um, so it's my turn, I guess. Um, the category is conspiracies. Uh, oh, so, shit. all right, I'm going to start the timer rolling at five minutes. All right. Okay. Epstein did not kill himself. <laughs> yeah all right so uh that's that's an obvious one for me i think yeah um, me too yeah I, yeah <laughs> like this this was quite clearly i mean I, the guards went missing his cellmates were taken out like right before this happened oh and, yeah and oh the the cameras watching him just yeah. mysteriously malfunctioned right before it happened um, yeah, one of the guards actually wasn't even a guard or something like that. I, I don't remember all the details. Just some Joe off the street or something. I, so it's like, and, you know, you go and you look at the connections um, that, that he had. Um, and th there's a huge push to cover this up. There was, uh, I think, recently uh, somebody, a, a reporter from ABC, some, some hot mic footage got leaked where she was saying she had this story and this, they've been building it for three years and uh, they, they shut it down. And, you know, they're saying, they're claiming, well, it didn't fit our journalistic integrity. But if you look at some of the things they've published without any kind of analysis, you know, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know that they really have that. But he had connections with a lot of people in high places. And I think people wanted to shut him up. Yeah. Now, who did it? I don't know, because in my opinion, the person in the hot seat right now that had the most to lose was Trump. 
but a lot of people were instantly like it was the Clintons and I mean they they're kind of like out of the spotlight and you know not really in positions of power anymore and um well Bill Clinton yeah. wasn't even that involved with Epstein like as far as I know like not nearly as much as Trump who was like there was a lawsuit against Trump and Epstein with all kinds of gory detail about child rape, like repeatedly over and over again with these Jane Doe's a few years back. And, and then it got dropped. Um, you know, mysteriously that the lawsuit was dropped for no particular reason, even though they were like hot on the tail. And uh, that's happened with multiple people, I think. And yeah, you know, Bill Clinton did go uh, to the Island quite a few times I, I know that that that's on record but yeah. here's the thing it really doesn't matter who i think it's evident when you start looking at the connections between uh epstein and a lot of these high level people that it goes deep it, it isn't just it's not it's not a partisan thing it is everyone like he had connections with all the players and i think you know it could be anybody that took him out but Definitely, he was taken out. I think there was a forensic uh, analysis done. Um, right. Well, his it. brother got some commentator from Fox News to do a forensic analysis. There's a lot of people skeptical about that just because of the ties that he has with, you know, a not so legit news source and stuff like that. But I, you know, the the, the findings that he had for whatever credentials he might have in that field sounded pretty legit and, I, and there were people saying oh but look at the picture that's not epstein it's somebody else it's a fake body or you know somebody else's body but i i i very detailed like i i sat there and looked at it for a long time and i was like no that's him it's just you know when you die especially by those means there's a few changes to your ears and stuff and you know like yeah it, yeah it's gonna bloat a little bit and yeah you know you change um, so, I mean, there's conspiracies around Epstein that I think are BS, like that one, like his body being switched out or whatever. Mm. I definitely think he was killed. Oh, like, he was totally killed. Yeah. Because people wanted to shut him up because he was he blackmailed a lot of people. I don't know how many. I, I Where's WikiLeaks when you need it? Right. Um, you know? like. And I want to throw in that, like, this is not, like, all these memes about Epstein didn't kill himself. That is not making light of child rape. No, like, not even close. Like if no. there were child rape jokes, I'd be like, yeah, shut that shit down. But this is, this is keeping the public reminded because they have very short attention spans and short memories. Yep. It's bringing a bad away. dude and some even more bad dudes or girls to mm. had him off to, to keep their bad shit going. And yeah. Yeah. We fine. need to know the answers to this. Cause I think it's, it's important to protect people in the future. Yeah. Kind of thing. Oh, well, there's oh. time. All right. All right. Well, so uh, next topic, next category is science. And uh, the topic I would like to talk about is... Wait, start the timer. Start the timer. Okay, All right. go ahead. What if, this is kind of like a bioethics thing. What if there was a cure for cancer found, but it came from a Nazi-style medical study? Ooh. Do you think we should use it? Damn. Well... I would say yeah, um, because maybe it would undo the all of the atrocities to to some small extent um, that were that were carried out by the Nazis. Um, mm -hmm. You know, saving a life is saving a life. It really it doesn't matter if the worst person in the world invented a life saving solution. Um, I think you should definitely use it because I don't think that the the source or the means negates the value, I guess. Right. I, I agree with that on two main premises. Uh, the first being that even if 6 million people died in horrible ways to get this cure, uh, it will be with us forever and save way more lives than, the, than it cost in the first place, which is, of course, terrible. But that brings me to the second premise is that those lives have already been lost. Why let them die in vain when 
you know, like something really good came from it. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, there were, so in, in reality, we learned a lot about hypothermia because the Nazis would dunk Jews in ice water and just evaluate what happened to their bodies and stuff. So we've actually saved a lot of lives knowing more about hypothermia because of what the Nazis did. And there's a yeah. lot of people who wanted to bury all of that, all of those findings. You know? uh, yeah, and I, I think there's just the, the people look to the Nazis as the only negative, but a lot of our scientific knowledge, uh, biology and, and uh, physiology and things comes from some pretty gross actions. Uh, yeah. in the past and you know the nazis are not the only ones um and yeah i agree that that if those people died in the course of studying a thing if we were to ignore and bury the data that we've acquired we have we're, they've died in vain yeah you know they, they, their lives are meaningless at that point yeah um, i think that would be a, a way bigger insult to their memory to you know um take away that i mean it's horrible to think of like a silver lining to something so atrocious but you know if if a cure for for cancer came out of that i would think that any one of those people if you ask them right before they died like you think the cure for cancer should go out even though it's costing you your life i think most people would be like well yeah i'm i'm gonna die anyway so uh, yeah you know make some good out of it Think about it this way, you know, we exalt the the soldiers that die um, out there fighting battles and things like that to, well, theoretically defend us. Um, we, you know, we ex- we put on a pedestal the 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 heroes of the space program that died in the interest of studying space flight and learning yeah. all these things and stuff. Why not people who died with a little less heroism? Um, you know, I, I think they're valid no matter what, and we shouldn't throw that away because we're essentially, if you throw away that data, um, you're throwing away that person's life. Yeah. As if it didn't mean anything. Uh, yeah. And that's a good point. I think that that will be with us forever and will be totally valuable and could potentially save millions or billions of people. Yeah. And science is built on the backs of giants. So, you know, any any knowledge that we can uh, hang on to we can build off of and make better and find new things from you know so yeah. it, it's exponential the the positive results that you can get from from such a horrible oh. and, and that's not to say that you should uh think positively about such atrocities right just right. because they resulted in something good it was still an awful thing that happened, um, yeah. <clears throat> you know, because that, I, yeah, don't go killing a whole bunch of people to learn new stuff. That, that's, that's not the way to do it. Right. We've, right. we've improved slightly over time, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really good point. I, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I, a lot of people uh, or, or a lot of our ethics came from the events of World War II. So it. It's always a good. Nope, oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so I think it's my turn, right? Yep. All right, so we're on to the category of philosophy. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to start the timer here. All right. Okay. The trolley problem, uh, otherwise known as the train track dilemma. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, what is the right choice to make in that situation? Right choice. Okay, so you've got a, a Y in the tracks, and there's one person tied to the tracks over here, and there's like three tied to the tracks over here. Is that right? Yeah. Three or yeah. four or something. Yeah. yeah, but the train is heading towards the bulk of people. So heading the idea people. is, do you switch the track to the kill the one person who would otherwise not be killed, thus saving the, the greater number of people? Or do you just let nature take its course and let those people die? Huh. Uh, first thing I would try to think of probably is, there, is there any other way to derail this train so it just goes into the ditch? But yeah. uh, 
but that, and then I suppose there's like a hundred passengers on the train. So uh, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like what, even more what do you, there's like a third aspect to it now. Like, <laughs> yeah. It just ditched the train because then a hundred people die. Um, yeah. Whew, geez. That, that's one that uh, is really hard to, to think about, but you know, it's, I think the easy answer is, um, you know, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or whatever. And it would, it would be less of a, an impact to the balance of the universe for one to die instead of three or four. Uh, yeah. Sounds I mean, weird saying that, but I mean, <laughs> that, I mean, that is why they call it a dilemma. Um, mm -hmm. it, because here's the thing, the person, the one person on the other track would not have died if you did nothing. You essentially killed them by yeah. switching the track to, to run over that one person who would otherwise survive. So, yeah, you've saved more people, but you've now killed somebody who wasn't going to die. And, whew, man, I... Yeah. Well, I, that is a, that's a tough one. This, this, this is a very relevant question, actually, because of self-driving cars. Uh, the... Yeah artificial intelligence that they're programming for these things basically asks this question regionally of people um, in, in all countries around the world, anywhere they're, they're, they're planning to have a self-driving car. They ask people a series of questions. If you had to choose between you know, running over uh, a lady with a stroller or an old woman carrying her groceries, which would you do? They ask, all kinds of questions about that, uh, you know, young, old, black, white, you know, male, female. Um, and it varies from region to region quite a bit. And they, they program their AI based on that region because there really is no right answer. No, you just have to go with the one that uh, most people in, in your, your demographic happen to believe in you know so so the uh the majority can decide that you're gonna die like, right think about, think about this too with self-driving cars for instance um if let's say you're you were driving or you were riding in a self-driving car and some unexpected thing happened like a bunch of school kids started crossing the street and there was no way to avoid hitting them aside from careening off the road throwing you down a cliff and killing you would your self-driving car opt to kill you <laughs> instead of killing the kids like as a uh, measure, yeah. I, I mean in that ew. and i don't know and that's the thing like i just go back to the the i guess in this case i think well if i weren't here these people would die and maybe that's the correct course of action to take. If, if you have to choose for a new person to die, then the best thing to do is to choose to just let it go the way that it would be if I didn't exist, if I weren't here, you know, cause I don't know that I could live with myself if I chose to let somebody die, or I guess, I, I don't know if I could live with myself if I allowed four people to die, you know, like I, right. I guess either way you're kind of damned. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think the more important question is, are these self-driving cars with artificial intelligence going to watch us while we're having sex in the car? Because everyone's just going to have sex in the car because they can, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And is it going to weigh the, your uh, partner uh, in the, in the algorithm? How many people are in there? Yeah. Um, I wonder if, I wonder if that's part of their, their ethics uh dilemmas like <laughs> yeah that is a really tough one i don't think you can algorithmically uh analyze that <laughs> oh well that's the end all right okay so i think it's on to you now okay so uh we're gonna do the category of current events next okay i'll start the timer at five minutes so uh i saw in the news today that uh trump is aiming to ban <laughs> flavored vape products even though we just a few days ago had a, a pretty good idea that vitamin e acetate is to blame which is mostly in you know black market stuff some legit stuff but you know like it it really is looking more and more like this is just uh 
I don't know, some money coming from the big tobacco to say, hey, let's wipe these guys out, you know? Yeah. What do you think is really going on here? I, I know as, you, as you're vaping right now that it, <laughs> this is, a, this is <laughs> a near and dear subject to you. So. Yeah, it is. And I, I, think, um, I think it is a money grab and it's, it's a control thing. And I definitely think there's connections with major tobacco companies um, and, and probably, I'm sure a lot of it also is related to tax money the state brings in, all that revenue. There's a lot of it because, if, I mean, if you look at the, the, the amount of taxation on tobacco products, it, it's huge. Yeah. And so they want an in, um, some, some way of either controlling or getting tax revenue from these untaxed products, I mean, other than sales tax, I guess. Um, so I think it is kind of, and of course, there's that little uh, twist that's always added where, yes, okay, there's some people who have died and some people who have gotten sick from black market products, but do they address that issue? No, they immediately twist it to flavors. Yeah. Oh, there's some people dying from vaping some illegal or illicit or gray market substances. Um, so let's ban the flavored stuff from legit sources that are not dangerous. And I will add, this is a problem unique to North America. It doesn't exist in other countries where vaping is popular. Mm, it happened in Canada, didn't it? Canada is North America. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so <laughs> you know, you go to any other place, they don't have this problem. So it's unique to here, you know. Yeah. Um, this seems like the uh, vice equivalent of the second Iraq war. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, uh, there seems to be a, a problem with, with people dying. And, uh, oh, we should invade flavored vape products. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, uh, I guess. Um, yeah. And the crazy <laughs> thing is so many people are on board with it. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, ban it. And, and I think it, they're probably people who, for whatever reason, have a problem with vaping or, or cigarettes or something. They just, they just don't like it. And so they're behind it. Um, but you know, if you look at it logically, there's, there's no connection there and it makes no sense to ban that kind of thing, especially in light of, you know, you have what 13, 14 people or something died from these illicit substances yeah, it's a lot higher now. They, they just haven't been talking about it in the news well, as much. I don't care if it's a thousand people. There's like four hundred thousand people, I think, a year that die from smoking-related illness. Uh, I think that's kind of. I mean, when you put it on a scale, uh, vaping is good and cigarettes are bad. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. You're gonna ban cigarettes. That's the thing. Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's possible to to see the two things as separate though, and. Um, you can you can be mad about both. I'm is what I'm trying to say. It's like sure. you know I don't I don't want you know 14 people to die as much as I don't want 400 thousand to die. Like you know, but it's like one battle at a time or whatever. You know they aren't well, they aren't actually related necessarily. Sure, but but vaping is a harm reduction uh, process. I think and and even if you ban tobacco products today it's still going to exist i mean look at the drug war that's been going on right forever yeah. and you could buy anything you want you know people people like their cigarettes and uh and their tobacco and nicotine products they're just going to get it one way or another so banning it isn't going to do anything it's just in fact and banning vaping just takes away a tool for people who want to quit to actually quit smoking cigarettes and i think that's a good thing even if a few people end up dying, oh wait, we just circle back around to the train track uh, thing. <laughs> oh, oh, interconnectedness man. here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Whoa, that's meta. <laughs> oh, man. oh, dude. <laughs> oh, that's time. Oh, all right. So, uh, uh, okay, you, right. That is on me. So the category is economics. I feel like we're in a Jeopardy episode for some reason. <laughs> um, uh, so, okay, I'm going to start the timer. Um, the topic is cryptocurrency. Is it a good or a bad thing? Oh, okay. You know, I, 
I don't really fully grasp what it is or how it relates to the dollar, but I did, I did get into Ethereum for a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, I, I started to make some money, but I mean, it's like kind of like gambling. It's like, I, I didn't get out at the right time and I ended up basically just kind of at a wash. I made a little bit of money off of it, but you know, I, I'm, I'm just such a like low baller, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't put in big money in, into it anyway. So it's not like I stand to make a lot in the first place. Well, yeah. And in that regard, it's, it's a little bit like the stock market or something, you know, which, that, which I fully see as gambling. I mean, oh, <laughs> it is, yeah. it's a little bit of educated gambling. Um, there are some things you can do to, to understand it. That. But but as far as crypto goes, well, it's a little bit different than that. Now, my take on it is crypto is a completely independent form of currency. Whether you uh, make up some sort of difference in price in the exchange of one currency to another, you know, if you're looking at, uh, say, Bitcoin versus the dollar, um, you know, you can look at it from that stand standpoint. But for a lot of people, crypto is the future it's it's kind of it's decentralized it's well while you can see who transacted with who uh for what amount you don't know what it was about and um it's still uh you having problems over there i can't get this bottle opener to oh. anyway yeah, keep going i'm listening okay yeah yeah <laughs> um <clears throat> so it, it because of the fact that it's decentralized and it's this whole blockchain uh, process, some people see it as a way of circumventing some rather draconian government things. And you know, we, we, we look at it from the standpoint of the United States, but there are some countries where it's a big deal. Venezuela is one of them. They're using crypto in the, in, uh, the stead of the Bolivar because everything's gone to hell there. Um, and so I think it's a, it, it, it's a good thing in that regard. And maybe it is the future. Why do we need paper money and bank accounts and stuff? Like, I don't know, maybe it's good, but a lot of people, um, people in the state are attempting to quote ban it, even though it's actually impossible to technically ban, um, other than the exchanges, like that's where the state could have control of it. But, um, you can't ban the transacting of it. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of think of it like. Um, you remember when we had a business, we, we kind of got involved in that barter system. Mm -hmm. That that was that was a little funny because it it was Saturn barter, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and, and yeah. it kind of treated it like a a cryptocurrency. I think. If if I'm understanding it correctly, because you would value your service or your product or whatever at at whatever you know U.S. dollar value or something, and it would equate to a certain number of barter credits or whatever they called it, and you could use that with another participating company. I mean, the the problem with that was there weren't that many participating companies. Yeah, you know, like I I think and and I think that might be the the thing with at least in this country, cryptocurrencies drawback is that it, it really isn't something that you could just like exchange hundred percent, you know, I'm giving up on the U S dollar and I'm just going to use Bitcoin. You know, that well, won't work that's, really. That's a chicken and egg kind of thing. Like I think in time it'll pick up and it, and it actually has, there's actually ATMs now around that uh, you can draw out your crypto in, you know, exchange. It, it's, it's a, portable exchange basically but you know the the state uh officials will say things like well it could be used for bad it's only used for criminal activities but it, it actually isn't so and, is the u.s dollar yeah that's <laughs> my point you know yeah. it's like jesus it, 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 it it's just another way of doing things but it's outside of state control which i think it, it's a good thing and we could probably talk about that on its own um, you know, the cashless society kind of thing and all that stuff and mm -hmm. negative effects of that. But yeah, I think, I think, um, it, it's the future. Um, eventually, Oh, well, that's time.
Oh, all right. Okay, so uh, it would be on to you. Yep, we're uh, getting to the penultimate category here. Uh, Extra we're point, talk- we're using the word penultimate. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to talk about religion. So uh, all right. let's get five minutes on the clock. Five minutes rolling. Do you think there's really a war on Christmas? A war on Christmas? Oh, man, I have heard this. I... I don't know that I would really say an actual war, like there's <laughs> people rallied together trying to shut down Christmas. I guess it depends on what you think of Christmas as being. You know, is it the Christian Christmas or is it the Santa Claus Christmas? Because right. if it's the latter, I, I, I think people are just embracing it as much as they always have. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there is a little bit of push, at least in the U.S., to to push religion out of things um but i i don't really see there really being a war on christmas yeah i if anything it's just trying to be a little bit more inclusive um there's people who get offended if you say happy holidays to them instead of merry christmas you know and and it's like uh it's it's very ethnocentric to just assume that everyone observes uh, something that's, you know, definitely imbued with Christianity. I mean, the the word Christ is right there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, I wouldn't say it's, it's a war necessarily, but it's, it's perfectly valid to uh, remove, you know, divisive language from things that apply to everybody, you know, like this, this holiday Christmas, as as you were saying, like the Santa Claus Christmas or the, you know, like however you want to say it, the uh, corporate Christmas or, you know, retail Christmas or whatever. That's a whole different, that's a different (laughs) discussion there. Yeah. Whatever it's evolved into, it's all inclusive. Like as an atheist, I like Christmas, you know, but not because I think it was the day Jesus was born because that was like, even if he existed, that was probably in April yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think the date is actually designed to coincide with uh, pagan. It is. Days, yeah. But yeah. whatever. Um, winter solstice and stuff like that. Right. Um, Yule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it, it's like you said, you know, people saying happy holidays and people getting triggered by that. It, it's like, I, who cares? I don't yeah. care if somebody came up to me and said, uh, happy Hanukkah. I'd be like, hey, same to you, bro. You know, or, or happy right. Kwanzaa or something like whatever yeah. floats your boat. I don't care. Even if I don't celebrate the day, I'm glad you're having fun. I, like, I was raised in a Catholic house. And, you know, when I asked, you know, what's what's with the happy holidays? They were like, well, you know, like New Year's Eve is really close. So people just kind of say that and say, you know, like it was never it was never explained to me as being like oh people are trying to inject all kinds of other cultures holidays from the, you know like no they they weren't trying to throw that bullshit on me it, it's like people come up with that and like run with it in their head and then you know you get this well a moral panic yeah uh, well, and I, I see it a little bit like the whole uh anti-gay marriage argument that that it, if there's couples getting married, same-sex couples getting married that somehow it belittles their own marriage. And I'm like, man, that is on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if your relationship isn't strong enough to withstand someone else's relationship that has no connection to you whatsoever, it, it's the same thing with, with holidays. Who cares? Yeah. I, it, it, have fun, whatever your belief is. And if you want to say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or Happy Hanukkah or whatever, just do it enjoy yeah. it and everybody else should do that too like yeah. be supportive of other people's fun and beliefs and stuff like that yeah Even i don't think don't... a single i don't think a single person has been like oh i'm offended that you said merry christmas to me so we should say happy holidays instead no yeah. I, that's not what happened <laughs> no i think i think a lot of times especially in corporate environments they're trying to kind of just be neutral so mm. because if you say Merry Christmas, you're by, you're kind of at that point sort of excluding the other similar holidays from other cultures that occur in the same time frame. 
Yeah. So I think just saying happy holidays, it's a good thing. And it's not dimin- diminishing Christmas in any way. Right. Because if it's diminishing Christmas, it's diminishing Kwanzaa. You know, uh, yeah. like every other uh, holiday yeah. that's celebrated around the same time, it's diminishing my winter solstice. So shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about and, the pagans? <laughs> yeah. And if it's coming from the government, it absolutely should be just happening. All right. All right. Well, that's (laughs) it. Okay. That was good. Uh, So the last category is the one that we both know about, and that's tomfoolery. Yep. Um, And so I'm going to start the clock here. So favorite Star Trek captain? Captain Picard. (laughs) I do. I really, really love Picard. Like, I think he's kind of the definition of the the ultimate Star Trek captain. But yeah. I oh, like oh, there's a but. There's a but. I like Cisco better, uh, even, oh. though, even though he started as a commander. Right, he's right. My favorite. I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. You know, he was he was captain for a few years, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, I. I, I see why you like Cisco. He's he's definitely he's definitely a runner up for me. But uh there's there was a a strong sense of diplomacy and cunning in 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 uh the portrayal of Captain Picard. Uh you know, he was he was somebody that people really looked up to but didn't also at the same time weren't revering him as a god where the the angle with cisco was kind of like oh he's the, this religious prophet character or something well, it felt like he was being a little bit like falsely elevated right off the bat yeah. only to the bajorans well, uh, yeah not necessarily to the, the the crew of the station so and but, to his credit he pushed back on that but and and the thing is he didn't live up to the definition of a god he did pretty awful things because he thought it was the right thing to do. And that, that's what I like about well, so did God. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. Okay. That's a different topic. Um, but you know, Picard was a great captain and did his speeches were great. Although I, I do like some of Cisco's better. Um, the thing that I like about Cisco, the thing that, that makes him a better captain in my thoughts is that he was, fallible that he made mistakes that that he grew he started off new and green and didn't know what to do and he was kind of kind of in the in the vein of picard but then there was the whole stuff with the mckee and stuff like that where he did some awful things and he never quite knew what was going on and then the whole battle with knowing that you're a god to these people or a, an emissary of of the gods to to the bajorans yeah. Um, and how he dealt with that. And I really, really loved that. Like he was a fleshed out character with a lot of depth and, and flaws. And he wrestled with a lot of stuff like his wife dying and things. And it, that's what I loved about him. He was a human being, like I, really relatable. Everybody could see that they could make mistakes just like him. And with Picard, he never really quite made too many mistakes. He always kind of triumphed in the end and, and Cisco didn't. And that, that's kind of, that's, they're, they're both like on a very, uh, the scales are very close in that regard. Yeah. That's the thing that tips Cisco uh, more to my favor. Yeah, no, that's, that's a compelling argument. He was, he definitely had, uh, you know, he was a little more relatable in that way in that he was, you know, fullable. (laughs) A red dwarf (laughs) reference, by the way, Um, for those who don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I mean, to me, it just boils down to, there are four lights. (laughs) Okay. That was a really good episode. It it was. That was amazing. That, That and like where he mind melds with Sarek. And he's like going through all those emotions at once. Like that was amazing. Oh yeah. Inner, yeah. The inner light. Like, oh, I guess this is more a Patrick Stewart thing, I guess, because it's <laughs> speaking to his acting skills. But like just that, if you take it in with the character, 
that was that was a lot of heavy stuff becoming the borg and oh and yeah, coming back yeah from it like he went through some heavy heavy shit mm-hmm. and still maintains composure you know which, like which, for the, for the most part like yeah he, and, and he lost it a little when his nephew died but that's about it you know <laughs> and we, we we won't talk about some of the stuff that happened in the movies but um uh yeah it, the thing that I guess maybe the fact that he overcame those things cleanly is the problem I have with him because people who are damaged don't always overcome things. And that's Cisco. Like he struggled with some of the dark things that happened constantly. And that's why I love him. I, I, I think well, that's it. All right. It's time. All right. <laughs> Oh, all right. that was that was an entertaining uh, forty five minutes of uh, going through all of our basic overshadowing uh, categories. There was yeah, it? that was. I think that I think that was good. That that was a lot of fun, and hopefully everybody else enjoyed it too. Um, you know, we'd welcome topics, although I think having them secret is a lot more fun than knowing what they are in advance. Yeah, so uh, I think we should make this kind of a semi regular thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 for the viewers, I, I want to hear what you think about this uh, format. Like, you like it? You want us to keep doing it? Yeah. Because um, I think we will. I th- this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Actually, yeah. And and it kind of it, it sort of covers so many things in a condensed format. Um, I mean, if you can con- consider forty five minutes condensed <laughs> <laughs> compared nine, to some of our <laughs> nine five minute pockets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks. Well, it has pockets. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, I thanks for deep sink diving with us, everybody, into every category that we have. <laughs> <laughs> Hang around for the song, and we'll see you next time. All right. Have a good night.